tonight subject who is responsible for all the trouble not only in our families but also in the world so who's responsible for sin who the family breaker and we want to identify that what do you say that not that power I don't want to name him the power because the greater power is Jesus Christ uh, the enemy uh, so why so much suffering uh, why pain poverty the ugliness cruelty accidents disease and death uh, we all experience it in our families uh, there's a culprit <laughs> the devil satan he is a culprit. You know, sometimes some people want to blame God when bad things happen to, get to them. No. When bad things happen to you, go to God uh, and still praise God. It's not from God. Uh, the devil is a culprit. Now, let's go a little bit into the history of, of Satan. Just as uh, a background tonight. Uh, now, he was the light bearer. Uh, he was the main angel in heaven, Lucifer. He was a light bearer. Lux Pharaoh means light bearer. And if you read in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, 12 to 14, you were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. But, uh, you know, sometimes the same with us. We aspire higher positions and he wanted to be like God. Uh, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend unto, into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Yeah. Now how can the pot be like the potter? No ways. Yeah. How can we be like the Most High? How can we be like God? Yeah. So in heaven, so... An important fact as well, sin started in heaven in the presence of God. Now, the reason why I mention that, you know, sometimes we as parents, we give our children the best, we set the right example, and still they choose to go their way. And then we walk around with guilt feelings. No. If you've done your best, you've prayed for them, you set the right example. I mean, right in heaven, sin started there in the presence of God. Yeah. So in our homes as well, yeah, it's their choice. Yeah. And we cannot force them. Nobody can force anybody to accept the Lord. Yeah. So in heaven, there was uh, the first war was in heaven too. So the Bible tells us in Revelation 12, verse 7, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels, it's Jesus Christ, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And they lost the first battle there in heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan who deceived the whole world. So the devil with a third of the angels were cast out of heaven. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Yeah. So that's why the devil claimed this world as his. He said, I'm a ruler here. Yeah. Do you remember when he tempted Jesus Christ? Yeah. He said, if you jump down from the pinnacle, look here. I'll give this to you. <laughs> 
But God is the creator of everything. Everything belongs to God. Well, this is always the devil want to claim what's not his. And he wants to claim us as well. But we belong to Jesus Christ because we are bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, not to Satan. Uh, so don't let him claim your life. Uh, Luke 10 verse 18 says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven uh, with his angels down to this earth. That's why Revelation 12 verse 12 says, Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwells in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. But there's good news. There's good news. Uh, this is going to come to an end. Uh, let's just persevere and not give up. Uh, now the nature of Satan's work. What was the nature of Satan's work? Satan is called the God of this world. Uh, and in the material you will find the verses. His tools are deception, lying, wonders, falsehoods, murders, temptations. Uh, you know, lying, wonders, miracles even. Many times people think when they flock to these meetings, you, you see sometimes the billboards, come miracles will take place here, healing will take place. The devil can also heal. All healing are not from God. The devil can also do it. And he's going to do that in the end time, especially. And then people, and he will say, I am Christ, I am Jesus, I am the Messiah. And he will do wonders, and he will heal people, and people will think it's Jesus. No. That's why I encourage people to study the Word of God, to study the Bible, so that they not be deceived at the end of time. Uh, because the devil is a deceiver, he's a liar, uh, he's a murderer. Uh, thirdly, he is the originator of suffering, sickness, and misery. Uh, so all the misery, all the suffering in the world, it's because of sin. And devil, the devil is the originator. He has been the persecutor of God's children throughout the ages. Uh, you know, sometimes we think when we have Jesus Christ or when we Christians, we say we're Christians, uh, everything must just go well. No. The devil will attack you. Uh, especially if you come out of the world and you want to surrender your life to Christ, uh, then the battle, the attacks will be on his fiercest. He will not let you go. Uh, but don't give up. Uh, hold on to Jesus. Uh, now, in the Garden of Eden, uh, God instituted marriage when he created Adam and, and Eve. So when God said, after he created Adam, God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I shall make him a help meet comparable unto him. So God brought that sleep over Adam. He removed one of the ribs, covered it with flesh, and he presented Eve to Adam, and Adam was so happy. Uh, he jumped up, and he was so happy. This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Uh, but you know, the Bible also says in this verse I've mentioned time and time and I will still mention it more. And a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and the two of them shall become one twine. And then the Bible says and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. But then something terrible happened. Eh? And after that all of a sudden they realized they're naked. So, why were they ashamed now? Because of their rebellion. Yeah. So, what the devil did, 
the devil used a serpent. Yeah. And one day, while, while Eve wandered away from her husband, <coughs> she wasn't too far away. Uh, ladies, it's, it's don't wander away. Yeah. <laughs> Men, don't wander away. Yeah. Uh, stick together. Yeah. Go places together. Yeah. Go visit together. Now Eve was enjoying the beauty of the Garden of Eden and then she walked towards this tree and there was a serpent, the most beautiful animal there in the Garden of Eden. And, uh, and the serpent said to her, is it true that God said that you should not eat of any of the fruits? Now God never said that. God said to them, told them, uh, they may eat of all the fruit except uh, the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, you see how the devil can twist uh, God's word? Uh, so, and, and Eve looked at the fruit. Oh, you see, it's, and uh, then she desires. You see, the longer you look, uh, the more you will desire and then you will act. So men uh, and women, the more you look at that other lady there or there, the more you look and stare, the more you will desire and then eventually you will reach out and act. Uh, uh, so turn away like Joseph. Uh, when the temptation is there, turn and run! Well, even if you must leave your coat behind, but run for your life. Yeah. And never tell yourself it will never happen to me. Yeah. And then go and play on the devil's ground. Yeah. So Eve took the fruit. So the devil is a deceiver. He's a liar and the father of all of it. Romans 6, 16 and 17 do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey? Now, we either the slave of the devil or we the slave of Jesus. Yeah. Romans 6, 6 and 16 and 17, whether of sin leading to death, obedience leading to righteousness. It's very clear in the word of God. Yeah. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. If you sin, you will die. Yeah. But if you obey, if you love the word of God, you obey, it will lead to righteousness. Righteousness means right doing. Yeah. So the word of God makes us wise unto salvation. Yeah. So the devil is the cause of the broken relationships right there in the Garden of Eden. Uh, the effects of the fall, if sorrow, pain, suffering, tears, disappointment, death, separation from God. Because what did they do? Uh, they hid themselves. Uh, and God came, walked in the Garden of Eden, Adam, Eve, where are you? They were in hiding. You know, many times our children as well, when they do something wrong, uh, and you call them, where are you? Hiding. <laughs> but we serve a seeking God. He will never let go of us. He will come after us. And we cannot hide from God, because God is omnipresent. Uh, whether we go in the highest heavens or in the lowest depth of the sea, eh, there God will find us. Eh. Shame. Eh. They were always naked before the fall, and there was nothing wrong. But after the fall, they were still naked. What changed? Not their nakedness, but their attitudes changed. Eh. Fear. Uh, previously, 
they were looking forward to their conversation and that relationship, communication with God. But now fear gripped them. Uh, and they were fearful. You see, sin is a terrible thing. Uh, the blaming game. Uh, God, is that wife <laughs> that you gave to me? Uh, and we find it in our marriages as well. Uh, this woman or this man that I got married to, uh, blaming each other. Uh, death. Yeah, sin will eventually lead to, to death. Uh, now, in the beginning, if you look at that man and woman, the oneness, uh, they will become one. Now, today we find sexism, uh, perverted sexuality, outside marriage, fornication, prostitution, homosexuality, lust, pornography, incest, and in the marriage, Adultery, divorce, multiple marriages, polygamy, lust. Yeah. And if you look at our marriage as well, the woman side and the man side, yeah. after the fall, nurturing nature rejected. After the fall, physical pain in childbearing. Yeah. That's why, ladies, because of the sin uh, that you must experience that pain each time when a child is born. Uh, it was not God's plan that it should be like that. But it's because of the sin. Uh, the man became the physical provider. Uh, thorns and thistles. That's why the men, whether it rain or sun, shine, you need to go out and work eight hours a day. Get up in the morning every day because of the sun. And another thing, after the sun, he shall rule over you. The man shall rule over you. The man has become like one of us, to know good from evil, so after the fall, shattered marriages. Yeah. Now, but let us not give up. There's good news. Although the devil came and he caused chaos, we find ourselves in a hopeless situation, but it's not so hopeless. There's hope for us yeah. and I want to touch on a few steps yeah. how we can come back to God step one how are we saved now we are not saved by our good lives our good works you can live a good life not drinking and smoking and still be lost we are not saved by our good lives we are only saved by grace. And the Bible makes that clear. For by grace you have been saved through faith. You must have faith in Jesus Christ. Now sometimes people will tell you, you've got your faith and I've got my faith. Now we know what they mean. They just mean that you belong to their denomination, I belong to their denomination. But the Bible speaks only about one faith. Our faith in Jesus Christ that can save us. Yeah. Nothing else. Not the church. You can be a churchgoer all your life and still be lost if you do not have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. So no sin will allow to enter heaven. So if no sin, God is not going to allow sin in heaven. Yeah. Why? Because His only Son died because of sin and because of his great love for us. Uh, sin claimed the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, Revelation 21 verse 27, no sin will enter there. Uh, so, if you're going to hold on to sin, you will perish with sin. Because when Jesus comes, he's going to reckon with sin. Uh, 
So we must let go of, of sin. So first of all, I must admit that I'm, because I'm born into this world as a sinner, so you must admit I'm a sinner. Yeah. It's like a, a drug addict. A drug addict you can only help if he admits I've got a problem. I've got an addiction. Then you can work on it. Then you can help. Yeah. But if they deny it, if I deny that I'm not a sinner, yeah, then I can't be helped. Yeah. So, now I admit, because I was born into this world as a sinner, and then also I must realize that the wages of sin is death. Yeah. Romans 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. So I must also believe in who? Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Yeah. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6 verse 23. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. This is the good news. We do not need to die in our sins. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Then it's important that you must confess your sins. To whom must you confess? Some people believe you must go and do confession by the priest. No. Who died for you? Who shed his blood for you? Jesus Christ. So only Jesus is our mediator. There's no other mediator. So we must go and confess. We must go down on our knees and confess our sins. And like David, ask God, please, Lord, search my heart and see if there's any unclean thing within me. Because sometimes we cannot recall all our sins. Yeah. So we just pray to God to do a, a, a proper job and clean us out completely. Yeah. Search my heart, Lord. Yeah. So we must confess to our Lord Jesus, our only Savior. Yeah. And the Bible says, 1 John 1 verse 9, yeah. he, If we confess our sins, He, that is Jesus Christ, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And not only that, He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we must not cover up our sins. You know, some people, they sweep their sins under the carpet. But the Bible says, He who covereth his sins will not prosper. Don't cover up. Yeah. Confess it to the Lord. Yeah. He died for your sins. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. And He loved us so much. And if we confess, yeah, He will forgive us. He will cleanse us. And He will also give us the strength to be victorious. Yeah. Because there's power in the blood of Christ. The Bible says, They overcame Him, the devil, through the blood of Christ. Yeah. So we must claim the blood of Christ and ask the Lord to fill us with His Holy Spirit. Then we will be victorious. That's why the invitation is, is uh, Isaiah 1 verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Yeah. If you're adulterer, come now. If you're a thief, come now. If you're a murderer, come now. Let us sit down. Let us reason together. Yeah. Let us make things right. Yeah. Though your sins be scarlet, it shall be as white as snow, yeah. as red as crimson. It shall be as pure as wool. Just come now. Reason. So have a talk with the Lord yeah, and set things right. So we must decide. Yeah. Now, we must be born again. Yeah. John 3 verse 3 and John 3 verse 5. Yeah. You remember when Nicodemus yeah, visited Jesus. Yeah. So Jesus said unto him yeah, that unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom. There's no shortcuts to heaven. Yeah. All of us must be born again. So he asked, but how can I? Look, I'm old. 
go back into the womb of my mother. Eh? Then Jesus said to him, if you're not born out of water and the spirit, eh, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So I want to go into that uh, uh, a little bit so that we can understand this as well. Eh? But every person must be born again. So how are we born again? John 1 verse 13 which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, all of us are born into this world through our biological parents. Yeah. That's our first birth into this world. And all of us are born into this world as in, uh, in sin. Yeah. That's why we're sinners. Yeah. So, if you're born into this world, you are born into a family. Yeah. So you must be born again to become part of the heavenly family. Yeah. So you must be born again, the spiritual birth, to become part and sons and daughters of God. Yeah. Now, Ephesians 1 verse 13 let me read that verse here from the NIV. Ephesians 1 verse 13 and 14. Very important. Yeah. Now, in Ephesians chapter 1, time and time again, you will read and you will find these words, in Him. It means in Christ. Yeah. So, verse 13. In Him. You also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Now, this is very important. Yeah. Outside of the truth, there's no gospel. When you come, when you hear, when you hear, yeah, the Bible says, when you heard, the word of truth, comma, the gospel of your salvation, in him when you believe. So all of us must search for the truth. And the, God's word is the truth. Yeah. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So we must study God's word. We must love the truth. We must come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. And then we must believe the truth. Yeah. So when you believed, were sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Many times you find people, and when you watch some of these DVDs where people, they make like this, and they say the Spirit that make you fall, and they lay hands on and they say, I can pray the Spirit within you. Nobody can pray the Holy Spirit into somebody else. Because the Holy Spirit knows the heart. What goes on inside? The Bible says, if you come to the knowledge of the truth, you believe, you accept the truth, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit till the coming of the Lord. That's why verse 14 says, He is the down payment of our inheritance for the redemption of the possession to the praise of His glory. Now, you ladies know, sometimes you cannot afford something and then you put down a down payment. What do they call it? A lay-by. <laughs> eh? They will wrap that parcel for you. It's like yours already. Eh? But now you're going to pay it off within three months and when you put down your last payment, then you get it. Now, the Bible says, eh, when we come to the knowledge of the truth, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit and it's a down payment. You have that assurance when the Lord comes back, you will go with Him. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So in Ephesians 1 verse 13 as well as uh, in Corinthians 5 verse 17 yeah, where it talks about the new creature, you hear the word of God, the gospel which is the truth, you decide to accept it and obey it and allow the Holy Spirit to change your life. And you live a new life in Christ. You cannot change yourself. Leopard cannot change its spot. Its spots. Eh? And Ethiopian is color. You must allow the Holy Spirit, God, to work within you. 
you must just submit and say, Lord, I'm sick and tired of this old life. Please, Lord, do something for me. And the Lord will do that. The miracle working power of Jesus' blood, which changes us from sinners to saints. So this is the good news. If you look in the book of Titus, chapter 2, 11 to 14, and 3, chapter 3, 3 to 7, we see that the saving grace has appeared unto all men, and the sacrifice of Christ teaches us the following, to deny our previous lifestyle, to put off the old man like ungodliness and worldly lust. You see, you must deny, put away the old lifestyle. Yeah? When you accept Jesus Christ, then he will perform a miracle in you. He will change you. Yeah? And ungodliness and worldly lust that you will leave behind. To live a new life, soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. Brethren and sisters, it's families and friends, it's a wicked world. But we must live holy lives in this present world. Okay. Not in the year after. Okay. We must live holy lives now. You see, why, why are marriages in trouble, families in trouble? It's because we pretend. Yeah. We don't live the lives that we're supposed to live. We live double lives. Yeah. But if we allow God to do the work in us, yes, Christ gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity, and to purify unto himself a peculiar people. Previously, the old life, uh, foolish, disobedient, deceived, hateful, verse 7, in which he also walked some time. Anger. You see, how do we act sometimes in our homes? then we still call ourselves Christian when we hit our wives because we're angry. When there's an unforgiving spirit, eh? we are fooling ourselves. Eh? This is the old life. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. What comes out of our mouths? Eh? Verse 9, the old man, verse 10, and such were some of you. Such were some of you, but thank the Lord, yeah, a miracle took place and he changed them. Some were thieves, covetous, greedy, drunkards, rev revilers, and slanderers, extortioners, swindlers. You know, sometimes it's our nature when somebody accepts the Lord and come back, then we look at this, this person and we ask ourselves, we wonder if it's really changed now. We tend to look at the past. Yeah. Now, if the person has accepted Jesus as his Savior, yeah, he was washed in the blood of Christ, then that was some of you were thieves, murderers, adulterers, but thank be to God. Yeah. There came a time in your life that you went to the cross and you confess your sins. And that's why the new person, saved by the washing of regeneration and renewing. Now, one of the sessions will be about this, this washing of, and, uh, of regeneration and renewing. Uh, when we will look at, at uh, the new beginning, uh, how we can make a new start in our lives and we will touch on the baptism there but if you read in Colossians 3 7 to 9 and verse 12 from the old man to the new man elect of God elect holy beloved eh? our characteristics bowels of mercy eh? kindness humbleness meekness long-suffering 
Do we find this in our homes? Eh? Our homes should be like this. Kindness, caring, long-suffering, meekness, humbleness. Uh, verse 11, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified. Uh, and we cannot do that for ourselves. That's what the Lord does for us. Uh, so the Bible clearly states that Jesus came to save sinners. Very important. First Timothy 1 verse 5. This is a faithful saying and worthy of acceptance, accept, acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Sometimes we want to write people off. The drunkard there on the pavement. Yeah. Don't write anybody off. Yeah. Jesus came into this world for them. Yeah. Matthew 9, verse 13, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh, now my question to you tonight, what do we call sinners that have come to repentance? Is there anybody? Any brothers and sisters? What do we call sinners that have come to repentance? Anybody else? And I will carry on. Yes. New, new creation, new creatures. Okay. But let's, children of God, all good, but let, let's come to the, to the main word that the Bible uses. Sometimes people will say, saved sinners. <laughs> now, now, okay, let, let me just do something here. Okay. Those who see themselves as sinners, put up your hands. Don't be shy. Put it high up. It's not like we're in, in school. Okay down your hands. Those who see themselves as saints, put up your hands. Let me see. Put I up. Now you see, this is a problem. <laughs> eh? This is a problem. Eh? And, and it's the work of the devil. Eh? Now, how can you still be a sinner after accepting and being washed by the blood of Jesus Christ? There's power in that blood to change us. The old man into a new man. Eh? You cannot remain a sinner. Eh? You are born into this world as a sinner. But then you get reborn, the new birth. Then you're no longer a sinner. The Bible speaks about saints and also children of God and the righteous. Yeah. Now there's a difference between a sinner and a saint. Yeah. The Bible does not speak you don't find in the scripture save sinner next to those two words next to each other. <laughs> yeah? Now, that will become clear now. So nowhere in the Bible do we find the word save sinner. There are two words that are used to describe sinners who have been washed by the blood of the Lamb that's righteous or saints. Now, why are we ashamed to see ourselves as saints? Sometimes, even elders, they will kneel there and pray the main prayer and say, Lord, we are gathered in your house as unworthy sinners and they've been serving the Lord for 20, 30 years and they're still unworthy sinners. <laughs> There's power in the blood of Christ. I serve a mighty God. Huh? 
Jesus saved me and he changed me. He changed my status as well from sinner to saint. Now 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But ye are chosen generation, a royal priest to the holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Man. Called out once, and that's ecclesia, when you look at church, ecclesia means called out once. Yeah. So we're different now. Yeah. A new person, a new life. But as he who has called you is holy, so you must also be holy. You see? You see, then we must walk the talk. We must live the life. Yeah. Revelation 14 verse 12. Now this is one of the favorite verses of Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they who keep the commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ. The patience of the? Not the patience of the sinners. Sinners are short-tempered. <laughs> eh? But here is the patience of the <coughs> saints. Now this is really good news. Eh? When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we are no more sinners. But saints, eh? Paul in his introduction, if you read the letters of the Apostle Paul, for instance, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2 and 3, to the church of God which is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Church people supposed to be saints. Eh? Church members. Eh? Church in Corinth, church in Ephesus. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 1. Unto the saints who are in Ephesus. Eh? Romans 1 verse 7. Beloved of God called to be saints. Many people think they become saints when they die after their death. No. You must live as a saint in order to die as a saint. You don't become a saint at your death. You live the life, and when you die, you die. That's why the Bible speaks dying in Christ. You die as a saint, but then you must live the life of a saint. Yeah. Remember, no sinner will go to heaven. So all those who raise their hands. Yeah. First Peter 4 verse 18, the Bible says, And if the righteous are scarcely only by grace are they going to make it. So if the righteous are scarcely going to make it, where shall the ungodly and the sinner be? The righteous is just going to make it by grace. Where will the sinner and the ungodly be? Yeah. Psalm 26 verse 9. Do not destroy me with the sinners. That should be our prayer. <laughs> yeah. Proverbs 13, verse 21. Disaster pursues sinners, but good rewards the righteous. Now tell me, where do you understand? Disaster pursues the sinners, but good rewards the righteous. Proverbs 11, verse 31. If the righteous will be repaid on earth, how much more the wicked and the sinner? Yeah, they will receive their reward too. Now if you read in Psalm 1, those verses there. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. The way of the ungodly shall perish. So if you see yourself as a sinner, that's why many times we're uncomfortable even in the church. Eh? It's because of this. The ungodly is not comfortable in the assembly, in the congregation of the righteous. Yeah. Now, sinners are welcome in the church because the church is a hospital. Yeah. And here they will receive healing, yeah. forgiveness and cleansing. Yeah. Luke 6, 32 to 34. Yeah. 
even sinners lend to sinners. <laughs> so the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans 5 verse 18. Now this is the, the, the cherry on the top of the cake. Yeah. Now there are many other verses uh, which I haven't included. Uh, uh, if you re even if you read Daniel chapter 7, then you will find out, I think the word saints appears seven times in that chapter. Yeah. Seven times. Yeah. The saints will be persecuted. Yeah. Now, Romans 5 verse 18, Therefore as by the offense of one, yeah, that's Adam, upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, that's the second Adam, Jesus Christ, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Now, verse 19. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one man, many were made righteous. You see? By one man's sin, many were made sinners. That's Adam. All of us born into this world as sinners. By one man's righteousness, Jesus Christ made righteous saints. We do not remain there. We change our status from sinners to righteous, to saints. Eh? Wonderful, powerful. Eh? We came in here without hope. We came in here as sinners because many hands went up. We're going to live here as saints. as saints. You see, that's the devil's plan. Eh? Do you remember how the devil accused God, Joshua, eh? about his robe? Eh? But we are covered now with the robe of righteousness of Jesus Christ. Eh? Eh? The devil will tell you, no, you a sinner, you a sinner. You know, and if you see yourself, after you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've been baptized, you've buried the old man, because Romans chapter 6, you go under, you die, you bury the old man, and you come up a new creature in Christ. He still wants to accuse you. No, but, but now you are quitted, you're free. Eh? Eh? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Eh? But if you listen to the devil... Now I'm a sinner. And you know when temptations come, you know I'm a sinner. Sinners do give in. They do these things. But if you see yourself, now I'm a child of God. I'm, 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 I'm a newborn. I'm a child of God. I'm a saint. And when Satan comes to you to tempt you, then you say, I'm a child of God. I'm a saint. The child of God does not do things like that. You see, it will boost you, it will help you to stand. Yeah. This is not a modification or just an improvement of the old life, but a totally new life in Christ. And I pray, God, that all of us will experience this tonight and that the effect will be seen in our families, and how we treat, how we talk to each other at home, that my children will see Dad is a new person, Something happened. Yeah. Because dad had a conversation with Jesus. And I can see my dad is changed, has changed. My mom has changed. Yeah. No more shouting and screaming at me. Yeah. Second Corinthians 3 verse 18. He are changed into the same image from glory to glory. The good work that Jesus Christ has begun in your life. He will bring it to fruitage. Yeah. Just remain focused on Jesus. Remain faithful to Him. Trust in Him day by day and He will give you victory. Mm -hmm.